Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And today, truly excited about this one. Uh, we have Mr. Greg Koshin on with us. Uh, great guy that's been doing some amazing things and has made a huge impact on lots of lives. And I'm, I'm truly grateful to have the opportunity to have him on. So first, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let's dive into it. Uh, if you don't mind, just you know, share with the audience a little bit about who you are and kind of track your journey for us, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, I was born and raised in Clinton, Iowa, which is a uh, town on the Mississippi River of about 30,000 people. It, it, when I was growing up there, it's probably about 20,000 now. Uh, my parents were common, ordinary, everyday people, uh, both high school graduates, uh, didn't go to college. Uh, my dad worked at a DuPont factory for his entire career after getting out of the military. Uh, my mom was an Avon lady to put uh, me and my brothers through college, basically. And, uh, you know, I was kind of an average kid growing up. I uh, uh, made decent grades, but it probably wasn't because I tried too hard. Um, I was very involved in athletics, and uh, that probably took a little bit higher priority in, in my 16, 17, and 18-year-old mind at the time. <clears throat> um, so I had great experiences growing up. Uh, uh, went from there. I went to college in Wisconsin, uh, played uh, a little Division three football at the time. Uh, Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, it's a, uh, at the time I was there, it was a school of about 1,600 students uh, on the banks of Lake Michigan. And it was a great experience as well. I don't know if, it, I, have, if I would have been ready to handle a, a large 15, 16,000 student campus. Uh, it was a great opportunity. I knew every one of my professors. Uh, could contact them immediately if you needed help. So it was a good, it was a good situation. Uh, I majored in uh, PE and history with a goal of becoming a teacher and a coach. Uh, right out of Wisconsin, uh, out of college, I uh, met a, a gentleman at a alumni golf tournament who was the director of admissions at uh, St. John Military Academy outside of Milwaukee. And it was a boarding school, uh, probably 250 all male students um, that were attracted uh, the, the extremely wealthy uh, and also uh, those who are not. Uh, we, we had a strong representation out of in, inner city New York schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we actively recruited inner, inner city New York schools and got some great athletes out of that area. I was telling you earlier, uh, that on one foot, I was only there a semester and on one football team, we had a, a youngster that ended up being the all-time leading scorer and still is the all-time leading scorer in uh, University of Florida basketball history. We had a, a young man who ended up playing in the NFL and we had several uh, division one prospects all uh, on that team of probably 30 students. Um, wow. So it was a great experience. I uh, worked for a guy who uh, had been a, a had some experience in coaching college, and I thought that's what I really wanted to do. So he kind of took me under his wing and uh, uh, helped me in the process of getting a graduate assistantship at the University of Louisiana Monroe, uh, was Northeast Louisiana at the time. Um, I knew nobody. Uh, I had. Uh, I went on a letter writing campaign. There were two criteria. I wanted it uh, to be a, a 
reasonable sized football program and I wanted to be somewhere warm. Uh, so I wrote letters to basically the southern and western part of the United States and uh, John David Crow was the head coach at the time uh, at the time and he uh, responded to my letter and we set up an interview and I uh, went down and right after Christmas in 1978, interviewed with them. They offered me a position and uh, I started my master's degree in coaching college football in January of that year. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent two years there, uh, had a great experience, uh, had a couple of job offers when I, my master's was finished. One of the uh, gentlemen on the staff was a uh, an assistant who got the head coaching job at Nichols State University in Southern Louisiana. So uh, I got married on January 3rd, 1981, moved to Thibodeau on January 4th, 1981, and started my college coaching career, kind of living my dream. Uh, I did that for five years, uh, met a lot of wonderful people, um, had some success. Uh, at that point, my wife said I needed to get a real job. Um, we had both of our, our boys were born in, in Thibodeau, uh, and, uh, you know, as a college coach, you're gone a lot. Uh, she had some health problems that she experienced and I just felt like I needed to be home. So ironically, my high school football coach from Iowa was the head coach at Eisenhower high school in Houston, in Aldean ISD. So, uh, I was lucky enough to hook up with him and I spent, three years coaching with him at Eisenhower, teaching history. And uh, at that point, uh, a guy named Fred Richardson was the principal and he offered me an opportunity to become an assistant principal. So I spent five years as an assistant principal at Eisenhower, uh, moved from there to Westfield High School and spent two years as an assistant, two years as an associate, and then four years as the principal. In 2002, uh, Dr. Stockton in, in here in Conroe had, uh, had become an assistant superintendent. He called and uh, we talked and uh, I was lucky enough to be uh, become the next principal at the Woodlands High School in 2002. In the next 16 years, I was uh, the principal there. Uh, I was fortunate enough in 2018 to uh, be selected by Dr. Knoll to be the assistant superintendent for high schools here in Conroe. So that's where I've been for the last four years. So I've been very fortunate along the way to be, uh, uh, have, have been given great opportunities for, for advancement and kind of uh, fit in what I really was looking to do in my professional career. So good. And uh, you have something else that's coming up soon for you in the next, on the next journey. Uh, and what might that be? Uh, if you add all the years together, this is 44 years in education, and uh, I'm not getting any younger, uh, and my grandkids are getting at an age where it's uh, uh, important to spend time with them. So in June, at the end of this contract year, I'm going to retire. I'm awesome. excited, uh, but you know, anytime you start something new, there's always that apprehension that am I doing the right thing is this going to work out uh you know as, as many job changes as I've had and I haven't had as many as a lot of people have but you always think after you made that decision boy I hope this is the right one and uh, I have been very blessed throughout the years that the decisions I've made with the guidance of many other people who have been in my corner have been the right ones for me and my family so I, I am uh, very confident that uh, God's leading me in the right way, and this will be the right decision for, for us going forward. That's awesome. That'll be great for your family, and uh, thank you so much for your service. And, uh, you know, I'm a fourth-generation educator, and so I would always hear uh, my family members, you know, we, I come from a, a family of church folk and educators as folk with no s so what i mean we were in church a lot <laughs> church folk and educators and uh, i would always hear them say you know it's a calling you know, it's a calling and so i didn't know what it meant until i got into it and you know, to be able to do it for you know as long as you have and be as successful is definitely a calling and i know that those students and, and teachers and communities have truly been blessed 
by having you be uh, their leader. So thank you so much for your service. You're welcome. It, it, it's a true statement that when they say, if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in your life. Yes. Um, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yes, sir. Well, what are three things you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Well, uh, first, I was the first uh, person in our family to graduate from college. Uh, and, you know, I think I'm proud of that. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, you know, in a day when uh, um, we didn't have a lot of money, um, my parents uh, took great care of us as kids. Uh, so we really valued what what that the resources they put into us. Um, but it, it was a commitment on their part to get us through college. Uh, I graduated from college with no debt. Uh, so I could go out and my first job, I was uh, not paying anybody back. I was living for myself. So that that is one. Mm. Um, I, I'm proud of uh, the career I've had. Uh, um, hopefully I've made an impact uh, on some students' lives. Um, I've always felt like in my role that part of our job was to develop character and help students uh, make good decisions. And for 20 years as a high school principal, um, at the end of the announcements every day, I, uh, we, we did a, a character ed deal. It was a, a series called Project Wisdom. And it was a series of quotes and uh, things that, that would get you thinking about um, doing the right thing. And in the end of those quotes every day, uh, we would finish it with make it a great day or not. The choice is yours, the choice is yours. because happiness is a choice. Uh, anger is a choice and you can you can control that choice. And over the years, um, you know, if there's one thing that, that, that kids remembered about me is, is the high school principal was probably that same. Uh, you know, make it a great day or not. The choice is truly yours. Uh, I had a, a conversation with a parent over the weekend whose daughter graduated in 2007 and she just got a new job. And I texted mom and said, man, I'm so happy for you that your daughter's doing what she loves to do. And uh, we're excited for her. And she said, well, you know, we want to thank you for your role in that and uh, hanging on the uh, above the door going out to my garage is the thing that you said every day on the announcements, mm -hmm. make it a great day or not. The choice is yours. So I felt like that was a success, you know, that somewhere along the line that um, I may have made a difference in, in some young people's lives and, and helped them. And, and I guess the third thing uh, would be my family. Um, I've been very blessed that we've been married 41 years. We have two great sons uh, in six wonderful grandchildren that we're, we're very proud of. And uh, uh, so I feel like that, that that's something that we've done correctly. Both of our, our sons uh, have families, uh, are, are employed, happy with what they do. Um, so I, I think that's a success. Definitely uh, three things to be proud of. And, uh, you know, just hearing you talk about your journey, the things that you are proud of, I would consider that to be hugely successful. So let's let's hit on success. You mentioned the magic S word a couple of times there in your statement. What what is your definition of success? Um, well, I, we'll start off with what it's not. Mm. Success has nothing to do with money. Um, you know, if you enjoy what you do and are good at it uh, and are happy with where you're at in life, uh, I think that that's the most important thing. I think in life, uh, if you make an impact on other people's lives, if you, you know, I've always felt that in, in education, we are servants. You know, we're here to serve others. We're in a public service industry. Uh, our goal is, is to make sure students are successful. And my definition of success would be seeing others be successful because of something you've given them, provided to them to help them be successful. Love that. Love it. Love it. Well, again, in closing, I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time to, to interview with the Success Chronicles. Truly appreciate it. I wish you continued success on your next journey. 
Uh, and again, thank you so much for your service because it has made a huge impact on lots of lives. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. you. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. And thank you guys for checking out this episode. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.